Hello and good local time everyone uh, and rest assured that this recording a video to be published under the Creative Commons Attribution License only include my video uh, and not your video, <laughs> but your audio may be included if uh, in the Q&A you ask uh, through audio. If you prefer not to get your voice print um, contributing to Creative Commons, uh, a chat box is also available. Now with that out of the way, so um, I'm really happy to be here virtually to share a little bit about the Digital Social Innovation Project that we've been doing in Taiwan and how we countered the pandemic with no lockdown so far uh, through fast, fair and fun projects and also the infodemic. We countered that with no takedowns. Now, digital social innovation to me means it's everyone's business with everyone's help. It means something that we in the open access, open innovation, open source community have always known in that with sufficient number of eyeballs, all bugs are shallow. And this applies not just to software uh, or cultural products, but also for collective intelligence. In Taiwan, we've had more than 25 years running now a public digital infrastructure called the PTT. Even though international media refer to it as Taiwan's Reddit, really it's very different. Because the PTT, uh, licensed under GPL v3 free as in freedom, is a collaboratively governed place, subsidized entirely by the National Taiwan University, uh, firmly in the academia, in the social sector, and uh, has no shareholders nor advertisers. And so it's one of the rare cases of a truly pro-social, purpose-built social media that successfully surfaced Dr. Li Wenlang's message from December 2019 that, and I quote, there were seven new SARS cases in the Huanan seafood market. Whereas in many other corners of the more anti-social corners of social media, there's a lot of flame wars going on around that time, around the same message. Very quickly, people in the PTT triaged the message and contributed to their analysis so much so that we began health inspections for all flight passengers coming in from Wuhan to Taiwan the very next day, the first day of 2020. So this shows that we trust the citizens maximally so that people can triage the systems freely and in turn, the citizens trust the government with their real-time reports, not just through PTT, but through toll-free telephone numbers. Whenever anyone calls 1922 to the toll-free number, chances are the very next day, there are questions if it's not already answered uh, by the professionals at a call center staffed by largest charity in Taiwan, Ciji, among other uh, contributors from the civil society. It will land in the daily press conference every 2 p.m. Every 2 p.m. in the Central Epidemic Command Center. For example, last April, there was a young boy that called 1922 saying, hey, you're rationing out masks, but all I got was pink masks, but all the boys in my class have blue masks and I don't want to wear pink to school because I'm a boy. Well, the very next day, including Minister Chen Shizhong of Health and Welfare wore pink. And Mr. Chen even said Pink Panther was his childhood hero. So overnight, the boy became the most hit boy in his class, for only he has the color that the heroes wear and the heroes' heroes, the Pink Panther, uh, wear. Um, and all these very interesting memes contributed by people dialing in this toll-free number are shared through Creative Commons, non-commercial, non-derivative, as memes, cards for sharing, and so on, that maximizes the clarification and the science toward the population rather than falling back to conspiracy theories or innuendo. Now, social innovation also pertains to fairness. In Taiwan, we have a movement called G0V, Gov0 incubated by our National Academy right in the IAS building. The Gov0 um, biannual, uh, sorry, by monthly hackathon gathers people who uh, feel that the government digital services doesn't work well. In Taiwan, all the digital services in the government ends in something that GOV.TW. But those civic activists, far from just demonstrating against the government, actually forks the government, taking the same website and service, changing an O to a zero. So by just changing something that GOV, the TW, the O to zero, you get into this shadow government that's always more fun. So forking the government means uh, like fork in software development, taking what's already there, moving to a different direction that's more accessible and with the hope that someday it gets merged back. 
Last February, for example, when we're rationing out masks, there's more than 100 different open source tools developed out from the civic community without consulting the government actually to display where in the nearby pharmacy are there still some masks to collect. Now, we trust the citizens with open data. So as soon as I learned about these projects, I talked to the premier saying, OK, we need to update every 30 seconds the real-time inventory of all the pharmacies mass storage so that all these different tools have the same like distributed ledger, right? the same um, source of truth when it comes to real-time management. And also helps us to detect data bias, to distribute more fairly, and to co-create pre-ordering mechanisms for first mask, but now also vaccines. Now, the same team of people this May banded together again, the GovZero people, to invent a check-in system that dramatically shortened our contact tracing from around 24 hours in May to now, by July or August, less than 24 minutes because it's all automated. It works very simply. Anyone without installing any app just use their mobile phone's camera, scan this QR code, automatically takes in the text. You don't have to type anything. Present and this is stored in your telecommunication carrier. It's not aggregated by the government. It's not aggregated anywhere. It's just stored as kind of an SMS record and only authorized contact tracing personnel from the local health authority have access to this data. And so by making sure that this is fast, fair and fun, and for epidemic control use only, using Creative Commons license, we enabled tons of different scanners. There's the Bluetooth-based Taiwan social distancing app that doubles as a QR code scanner. Line, the leading end-to-end -end encrypted chat tool, also modified their functionality to serve as a scanner, and so on and so forth. And finally, I talk about epidemic control, but what about infodemic? During the pandemic, of course, people feel anxious. There's a lot of conspiracy theories about mask efficacy, about whether to keep social distancing, about vaccines, and so on. And we found it's very difficult uh, to take down any of these, mostly because we're a pluralistic democracy with most of the citizenry still remembering the martial law and they don't want to go back to the martial law. And so instead of, you know, provoking more outrage by taking anything down, we add to it, fighting fire to fire, so to speak, by using humor and very cute spoke stocks. The Shiba Inu named Stong Chai speaks for the Central Epidemic Command Santa. So we say when you're indoor, keep three uh, Shiba by Inus away from one another when you're outdoor too to keep the physical distance. And why wear a mask? Well, wear a mask to protect your face against your own unwashed hand. Again, nobody disputes that, especially when it's a very cute dog saying so. And all these creative commons works is not limited just for epidemic control. Indeed, the Taiwan Digital Asset Library digitizes the presidential office, the buildings of heritage, and so on, under creative commons, so people can use it in their research and also computer games. Our National Dictionary also published similarly, and all the photos that I took is also uploaded into the creative commons for all sort of remixing and parody and whatnot. But there's also a more serious side of it. When we in the administration embrace digital radical transparency, I discovered that much as how the judicial and the parliamentary branches adopt radical transparency, when I say, OK, all the meetings, including this one, will be uh, recorded, at least a transcript will be published uh, under a common toso, a XML vocabulary, on the internet in the SAID website. The nature of conversation changed. The lobbyists, when they talk to me, always profess their love for the global goals, for the sustainable goals, for the best of the future generations, because they know they will look very bad to future generations if they lobby for something that only works for their short-term benefit to the detriment of the future. So by essentially saying the public domain is watching, we say it's not just about our constituents, it's really about the world, because when you publish in the internet, well, under Creative Commons, the entire world learns about it. And once people get well-informed records on when and why the policy is being made instead of what just the what of the policies, well, it enables novel applications of democracy as a technology. So again, co-created with GovZero, 
we have this tool called Polis. It's polis.gov.tw, which means it's a official government website now. It's being merged back from the civil society to the government. It's an assistive intelligence tool based on K-means clustering and principal component analysis to show the sentiments and preferences of people when faced with a new emerging uh, regulatory puzzle, for example, UberX, uh, which is the first sharing slash gig slash platform economy uh, issue we tackle in 2015. So what you're looking at is my uh, real map of my friends and family and how they feel about the UberX phenomena. After sharing the facts, we crowdsource the feelings resonating with one another for around three weeks. And after that, we always ideate two of the things that are accepted as good enough consensus or rough consensus by the people, and then we ratify that. And the way it works is very simple. Just like PTT, anyone can post. And if you post that uh, passenger liability insurance is important, if you agree, you move toward me. If you disagree, you move farther away from me. But there's no reply button, so there's no room for trolls to grow. Rather, people see each other's differences, each other's similarities, and are incentivized to post their own ideas and have a conversation in a pro-social way. And after each three weeks conversation, we always end with a shape like this. People agree there's some ideological differences, but everyone actually agree that insurance is important, not undercutting existing meters, very important, the registration of vehicles, empowering local temple and church to run uh, their own fleets. These are important. And most people agree with most of each other, most of the time on most of the things. This is a stark contrast uh, versus more anti-social corner of social media or even popular media when people would think that these five ideological differences are all there is. So we can think of democracy itself as a co-created social technology and innovation, as we improve the bit rate of democracy itself, we can further develop the measurements of progress, not from a top-down way, but from a co-creative, co-governed way, much as how PTT did uh, their co-governance 25 years ago. And in SDG terms, this means that we're combining the interest of economic, societal, and environmental interests together in the 17th goal the digital innovation goals. And five years ago, when I became the digital minister, the HR department from the administration asked, OK, minister, uh, we've never had a digital minister. So what do you do? What do you want to do? I'm like, all I want to do is 1717 uh, effective partnership through 1718 reliable data through 176 open innovation. And the HR department said, Minister, nobody memorized those SDG targets. It was just introduced in 2015. You have to speak in plain language, which is why I translated all that, the GovZero, co-governance, the social innovation just mentioned, into poetry form, which I will now close with my job description before opening for Q&A. It goes like this. When we see the Internet of Things, let's make it an Internet of Beings. When we see virtual reality, let's make it about shared reality. And when we see machine learning, let's make it collaborative learning. When we see user experience, let's make it about human experience. And whenever we hear that the singularity is near, let's always remember the plurality is here. Thank you for listening, and I look forward to the Q&A. Well, thank you so very much, Audrey. I'm sorry that, that uh, I missed the opening. <laughs> My line was, was disconnected. But um, um, also, I would like to also add, as you, you have listened to, uh, to Audrey talking about this three uh, principle, fast, 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 and fun, and, and, uh, and fun. Uh, what is the other one? <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> the principle about it. But uh, I would like to add that the uh, the uh, object actually is widely known now to uh, to Taiwan. Most people in Taiwan uh, amid this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, as the chief architect for the e-face mask distribution system and real name QR the code registration system as you could heard, 1922 SMS registration system for contact tracing and vaccination reservation system and so on. Uh, so uh, we are really pleased to uh, to uh, have Audrey uh, talk about this um, this uh, the social innovation. I know that uh, Audrey is a uh, is a tele teleworking mass uh, <laughs> minister. Yes. Ever first teleworking. You have you have seen Audrey's uh, office there, virtual office. Uh, Audrey works uh, uh, around the uh, around the nation all the time. 
all the time. Okay, so this uh, now let me open up for the uh, for the session to uh, to any anybody who would like to comment on uh, and ask question, uh, uh, post question to Audrey. Anybody? If anyone has questions, they can type them in the chat or they can speak directly by turning on their microphone. We have enabled everyone's microphone. So with, uh, with Audrey's uh, closing remark, uh, this uh, uh, thing here, you can see that Audrey is a, is a what we call it, a poet, a poetician. Right? That's right, a poetician. Uh, I mostly write poetry, yes. A poet, poetician. <laughs> Yes. Uh, any question uh, of David? Uh, I think you're muted. It, it turn on your, your microphone. Your 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 microphone is off. David. Okay. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. How effective would this policy be for the public of Taiwan? Well, we did uh, reduce our local confirmed case to low single digits, uh, zero or one for the past uh, few months and for most of 2020. So in terms of pandemic prevention without uh, lockdown fatigue and things like that, it's evidently very successful. It's harder to measure how the counter infodemic uh, efforts work. But anecdotally, I believe our 2020 presidential election, because we developed such humor over rumor, um, notice and public notice, um, end of us, it's much less swamped by this information compared to the 2018 uh, mirror election slash referenda. Um, but uh, I would say that in general, the principle of effective stems from empowering people closest to the ground, to the pain. So as long as there's further remixes, further innovations keep coming from the GovZero community, I would say is a success. It's good enough. It's never perfect. Yes, I, I like your expression, humor over rumor. rumor. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm an anthropologist and I live in Hualien. And it's very excellent that you made this presentation to us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Has Someone questions? cannot uh, hear. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, my name is Wayne Defer Ray. I teach Korean literature and poetry in Korea. Ah. Um, and I wanted to thank you for just a fantastic uh, talk. Um, and it wasn't the focus of your talk, but I would love to hear you kind of think out loud about the relationship, because I study poetry, <laughs> between technology, poetry, and public policy. Uh, these are not things normally put together, and you seem to have put them together uh, spectacularly yeah. well, with great mm -hmm. effect, and so I'd love to hear more about that. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, I do believe that the simpler the idea is to express and understand, the larger room there is for interpretation in the mind of the reader. And it turns the reader from being a literate person uh, to becoming a um, competent person, right? And that's what poetry really does to people. It inspires people into thinking uh, out of the box or even doing actions that they have previously considered too silly or too impossible to do. Uh, and that's because the ideas are simple, it rhymes, easy to remember, and then it leaves plenty of room for that particular person to contribute. And so um, I believe the most complex ideas in policy making could be made much better if in the individual components like uh, wearing masks to protect oneself from one's own unwashed hands by distilling it to the essence and then uh, just rhyme it and then before long in various different cultures in various different communities they will find a way to resonate uh, with that idea and this idea of mutual resonance to or a more eclectic understanding and so on I believe is much more intuitive and approachable to an average person um, as compared to if you tell them about about, you know, deliberative democracy, participatory democracy, or some uh, large multi-syllable words. Fantastic, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any more questions? 
Any further questions? Yeah, maybe ask Audrey, what do you see next uh, after this uh, pandemic? Uh, I think in, in situation in Taiwan looks like uh, it's Eastern, but then in out oh, yeah. it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's not like that. What do you see from here, uh, the, from the perspective of from Taiwan? Well, I see that we have a global community, a true global neighborhood now. It, before the pandemic, it's actually very difficult for me to meet my counterparts in other countries because they don't often video communicate with each other. They prefer in-person meetings. But nowadays, because we share a common urgency right, about pandemic and infodemic control, we then can take this existing solidarity and then take it to tackle other international challenges. Uh, climate action uh, around the climate emergency that we're facing now is an obvious next step. And uh, for those global issues that can only be tackled by sharing ample evidences, by sharing the climate science, the data pipelines together and so on. Previously, it was difficult because every jurisdiction have different urgency tackling such matters. But now we're just piggybacking on our existing alliances around pandemic pandemic and infodemic, and that also furthered the stage uh, for the Taiwanese participation uh, on the global stage, because where we have broadband as a human right anywhere in Taipei or Hualien or whatever, uh, we can participate on the international stage equally easily. I know that you also had this opportunity of, uh, of being a, a, a robot there, uh, yes. at the presence at the end. Yes, at the UN Geneva building uh, for the Internet oh, Governance Forum. Yes. Yes. I see David. Uh, David, yeah, David, I think with quest with a hand. Yeah, my question is on the international Please, stage. Go ahead. How will this beautiful and elegant presentation that you have just given give Taiwan its credit? as a beautiful democracy and a place of beautiful people as an island nation to continue with the threat of China. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I believe that uh, many international uh, correspondents in Taiwan, some of them previously in Hong Kong, now located in Taiwan, do report uh, on our story. It's not just our domestic producers of, for example, the public TV's PTS World, the CNA's TaiwanPlus.com. These are, of course, excellent end of us. But also, for example, CNN just did uh, a investigative report on Taiwan's thriving democracy and so on. So I believe this narrative of Taiwan being the top on semiconductor and bubble tea and whatever is now being complemented by Taiwan being a pluralistic society with very inclusive inclusive um, marriage equality, digital democracy, and these more human-centered features is now being more widely known. And I do believe that if the democracies of the world see Taiwan as being very uh, much willing to contribute our innovations in democracy, then they will not let us face the threat of authoritarianism alone. Thank you. Thank you. Will you visit uh, Washington? Mm -hmm. I, I did uh, a few times, actually, uh, and around the um, UN General Assembly when back when it was still held uh, in person. Uh, I did uh, visit a couple of times and also uh, I participated in the CSIS, among other think tanks events, to talk specifically about our counter disinformation uh, methods. I believe many researchers are continuing uh, this line of research to learn from Taiwan. So if you uh, search for the Taiwan disinformation, the Taiwan model to counter disinformation, you will find many fine reports being written uh, recently around our model. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. I believe there's a comment from Anne Gillen. I put it into the chat. I'll read it out loud. She says, I would like to thank Minister Audrey Tan as her presence and usual efforts and achievements regarding the pandemic are now a topic of popular culture article submission. 
I can say this as the editor-in-chief of the East Asian Journal of Popular Culture. Thank you. Uh, and I talked about the uh, think tank reports. I just found one, the NBR special report on the Taiwan model to coordinate to counter disinformation. I've just pasted a link to the chat as well. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, I think if you uh, sort of, sort of uh, want to learn more about uh, Audrey, I think you Google Audrey Tan, you will find that the, the, the Audrey talked about the, uh, the NPR and they also talked about the, the TEDx <laughs> and many other occasions. Uh, Audrey made a presentation uh, on, 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 this, uh, on this topic about, uh, about social innovation. Yeah, uh, and, and thank you, Dr. Lee, and really everyone at Academia Sinica, because 20 years ago, when I got first foray into open innovation, it is in Academia Sinica and the Open Foundry and Creative Commons community that really nurtured me and, and raised me. So uh, really my gratitude uh, to the entire community. Here, not uh, many people uh, know, know about it that uh, you were at the Institute of Information Science a long ago, 27 right. years ago. That's right, the, the first our contractor, <laughs> yeah, very, actually. Very, very good. <laughs> That's right, very good to have you back, invite you back to the to the PNC, uh, this <laughs> forum there, and uh, hosted mm -hmm. by the uh, by uh, Academia Seneca. Mm -hmm. You are out, uh, out night. <laughs> That's right, almost my alma mater. I've never attended a college, so this is the closest I have uh, to alma mater. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. David? Yes, thank you. David, you have a last question, the remark? Yeah, David. Thank you, your partnership with India. Yes? Your, your partnership uh -huh. with India. Yes. Uh, well, we're working very closely in the Indo-Pacific toward making those social innovations more known. Uh, and India, from what I understand, uh, is a constant um, inspiration as well as attendant to various online hackathons and international social innovation talks. Now, my talk with the um, India representative uh, to Taiwan mostly centers around the idea of tackling the climate crisis and tackling how to make a sustainable agriculture, sustainable production, and so on, uh, using uh, platforms such as the, plaf uh, the presidential hackathon as actually established also by Dr. D.T. Lee uh, with the presidential office. But uh, going forward, I do think that there's room for more people-to-people -people ties uh, there as well because Taiwanese people are learning uh, about India much more now that a lot of our manufacturing uh, facilities, logistics, as well as uh, our even service industries and so on are being extended there. And so I I believe there will be more cultural exchanges in addition to the more kind of material ones around climate mitigation and so on. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. It looks like uh, our time is uh, is up, and we are very uh, thankful that, uh, that, that our digital minister Audrey would uh, take this opportunity to spend some time with us on, on this Finlandi uh, keynote session on PNC. And um, we were really uh, um, uh, uh, pleased to have uh, this uh, 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 fast, fair, and fun politician, digital minister. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and really good and, uh, questions. Yes. Talking speed. Talking speed. Yes. <laughs> Okay. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. And live long and prosper. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Yes. yes. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. Thank you so very much. Okay. Let's go. Uh, okay. Okay. So we'll conclude this uh, this session. Uh, this session. Uh, thank you very much, Audrey. Thank you. Bye.